Isn't it crazy? Seems that no one can agree on anything anymore. It's almost like every year things that used to be taken as normal have become controversial. From the sports we watch to the way we raise our kids, everything is becoming more and more polarized. It's almost like we are living in a different reality than the people we disagree with. When you can't even rationalize with the person you are discussing an important topic with, how will you ever come to a solution? That's the world we're in right now. There is no longer a middle ground to compromise. And with that being the way of the world, I thought it'd make a great topic for us to talk about today. So what do you do? You're in a debate. You think you're making some valid points. You nailed it. And there's no way they can refute them, right? Then it's your opponent's turn to talk, and their response doesn't seem to be about anything you said. And if it does, they seem to be completely missing the point. Once he is done going over his progressive garbage talking points, you give a response. This time, you got him for sure. You easily refuted everything he said. After you owned the libs, he looks at you with an odd stare and lets you know you have no idea what you're talking about. Now you don't know where to go from here. Both of you are talking past each other, and you both think you're the one winning. What's really happening is that neither of you can comprehend what the hell the other one's even saying. It's not easy to debate tough topics. The reason for it is because we no longer have a common goal. You see, us traditionalists are looking for order and stability above all else. The progressive is looking for equality over everything. And neither side has any care or interest in the goal of the other side. So how do you win? Who's right? Debating is obviously getting us nowhere, and no matter how much we talk, we're not changing anyone's mind. The answer, like most traditionalist answers, is going to be an old one. It is the most natural way that the universe has solved all problems since the dawn of time. It is that might is right. Let's talk about what that means. How about we use another example? That should work as a way to explain. Okay, so let's think of two shoe stores. They're both going to open right next to each other on the same street. There is a need in the city for a shoe store, but the problem is there's only enough customers for one store to be profitable. So before the store is open, the owners meet to discuss why the other should leave. The first store owner says that his employees will deliver top customer service and that the customers will be lined out the door because of how good the employees are. The second store owner says that that's ridiculous and that the customer only cares about price. He might not have as good of service as store one, but his prices are a lot lower than anything store one can do. The two debate for hours and how their stores will easily win and that the other should just leave town. Both, of course, refuse to back down. So what do you do now? They both made great points, but neither will budge. How do we figure out who's right? This takes us back to the original point. Remember, might is right. The only way we can see who's right is by survival of the fittest. Both stores open on the same day and the customers end up lining up to store two because they have great prices. Store one struggles to make ends meet and has to shut down a few months later. In the end, store two was right. They were stronger than store one. No matter how much store one rationalized their points of amazing customer service, it was meaningless once the customers started coming in. Nature has always rewarded the strong. Since the first creatures wandered the earth, the strongest have survived to pass on their genes while the weak would perish. 
In the Middle Ages, the field of battle would decide what king was the rightful owner of land. Even today, the rule applies in the workplace. The strongest candidate's the one that gets the promotion. Now, even though we do know might is right, we must remember, we're not savages. Using your strength against a friend or a neighbor will only cause hostility from the others around you. They will see you as a danger now. That will cause instability in the community where larger, more powerful communities can now take over or spread their influence. There's always a balance in nature and empty aggression towards the innocent will always create blowback. This leads us to one of the most important parts of this topic. The strong must have compassion for the weak. As the old saying goes, the weak ones are there to justify the strong. Without the lower caste, the hierarchy will fall apart from the bottom up. That's why it's our moral duty to look out for our poor and our weak, as they are the foundation of society. In a healthy community, this will happen naturally with the churches and charities taking on the burdens of the bottom caste. Unfortunately, we are no longer in that healthy community. As progressive thought became more dominant, to take care of the lower caste it had to be done through forced wealth distribution. When you require the strong to take care of the weak, it stops being a moral duty. At that point, you're now just stealing from one group to give to another, causing resentment between the caste. The progressives through this socialized system are squeezing the caste together into one. That is very unnatural to us humans and causes a volatile environment for all people. Much like a weight on a spring, the socialized system is holding the hierarchy down. In a matter of time, if there is no release of pressure, the spring will erupt violently. Unlike the progressives, our view of the world works with human nature. The ones are strong, must take their rightful place and lead their people. We must help the weak in a more natural system that also maintains the hierarchy. This is the natural order of the world and we all have a place in it. It is up to you to fulfill all the responsibilities of your place in the world and make sure to be strong. Because might is always right.